Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the thriller mystery films from 2023, titled Leave the World Behind. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. At the start, we are given a view of the beautiful sunrise at New York City. Somewhere in town, a man named Clay Sanford, wakes up from his sleep, only to find his wife Amanda packing their belongings. When asked what she's doing, she reveals that she's booked a beachside house somewhere in the countryside. She decides to take her family on an unplanned vacation for a few days, as she's tired of meeting people. Clay, who is also longing to go on a vacation, agrees without much thinking. In the next scene, the Sanford sets off for the countryside. The couple has two children, 16-year-old Archie, and 13-year-old Rose. The boy appears to have a nonchalant and carefree attitude, while the little girl is fixated on watching the television show, Friends. After a while, they arrive at the rented house, which turns out to be breathtaking. Clay notices a collection of fancy booze inside a cabinet, but he is unable to open it. Meanwhile, the kids waste no time and dive right into the swimming pool. As for Amanda, she takes a tour of the entire house, and then she goes to the local supermarket for some groceries. While returning, she spots a bearded man loading several cartons of water and canned goods in his truck, it's almost as if he is stocking up for something. Amanda finds it a bit weird, but she doesn't say anything at the moment. At noon, the family heads to the nearby beach to relax. It appears to be a normal day as several people are seen enjoying their time. Meanwhile, the little girl Rose, who is a bit curious by nature, spots a large ship in the distance. As she keeps staring at it, she says it's getting closer, and Clay speculates that it might be a large oil tanker. The family then dozes off for a while, but Rose is fixated on the ship. A few minutes later, she alarms her parents that the ship is still moving towards them. People there start to think something is off, and start panicking when this happens. This causes them to panic and they immediately make a run for it. The ship crashes against the beach, ensuing chaos amongst the people. The beach is sealed off until further notice, and the security on the beach says the ship's GPS was not working. Later on, the family returns to their rented home, and Amanda tries to learn about the beach incident on her laptop, but the internet doesn't seem to be working. Clay also cannot watch his favorite game as the TV signal is out. As they discuss the matter, they suddenly spot some wild deer in their backyard. This brings a smile to their faces, and Clay believes that it's a good omen. Soon, night falls, but the internet is still not working, and poor Rose cannot watch the last episode of Friends. Meanwhile, the parents are having some alone time in the kitchen, but then all of a sudden, they hear a sound coming from outside, which freaks them out. Clay grabs a blunt object, assuming that it is an intruder. To his surprise, he finds a well-dressed man with his daughter outside, and he introduces himself as G.H. Scott, the house owner. Hearing this, the family is left in absolute shock, but nonetheless, Clay invites them in as it is cold outside, while Amanda is reluctant. Once inside, G.H. apologizes for showing up this late at night unannounced, but he reveals that his phone signal is also not working. His daughter, who seems to be witty, introduces herself as Ruth. G.H. then reveals that while he was traveling through the city, there was a sudden blackout, and this plunged the entire place into darkness. Ruth adds that they live on the 14th floor, but without the help of an elevator, her father can't climb all the way up due to his knee problem. Because of this, they decided to come all the way here to their second home. G.H. hopes that the Sanfords can let them stay for the night, as it is not safe outside, but Amanda is absolutely livid, as she doesn't want to live with strangers. She claims that she has rented the place and it's her right to live alone. When she starts shouting, G.H. calmly comes up with a solution. He brings out a key from his pocket, and with a lot of struggling, he opens the liquor drawer, which has money and a pistol in it. He retrieves an envelope which has $1,000, and hands it to Clay as a refund so they allow them to stay there. Clay gladly accepts the offer, but his wife demands to talk with him in private first. Amanda then says that she doesn't trust the strangers, she believes that they are scammers, who have come by to rob them, and all the stories about city blackouts look fabricated. Clay reasons that G.H. had the key to the cabinet, 
but Amanda believes that he could be a housekeeper. Hearing all this, Clay reassures her that he'll talk to GH first before coming to a decision. In the next scene, the adults once again sit down for a chat, and GH claims that he bought this house 20 years ago. He also says that his wife is an art dealer, who is on a business trip in Morocco, but she will be coming back home the next morning. Despite his sweet talk, Amanda still thinks that he's a scammer, so she asks to see his ID. GH promptly obliges, but when he checks his pockets, he realizes that he left his wallet at his workplace. Of course, Amanda finds his statement a bit suspicious, and then they are startled by a loud shrilling sound coming from the TV. An announcement from the US government states that this is a national emergency, but the cause is not mentioned. Because of this, Clay allows the father-daughter duo to stay in the basement suite for the night. Ruth hates the basement, and wants to throw Amanda's family out immediately, but Scott calms her and tells her he will determine what to do next. After everyone falls asleep, the TV suddenly switches to an update, which reveals that the country is under cyber attack, but the transmission is quickly lost and nobody notices the news. In the morning, Amanda is woken up by her daughter, who is desperate to watch the finale of Friends, but mom tells her that they have bigger problems. Amanda then checks her phone, and gets shocked to find some breaking news notifications, despite having no internet. Alarmed, Amanda quickly wakes her husband up to show him the notifications, but they mysteriously disappear, almost as if the hackers are erasing every piece of information. Afterwards, Clay decides to go out and find someone who knows what's going on. Outside, Rose is sitting by the pool, and this is when her attention is drawn to some deer, which have arrived outside the house. When she goes near them, she is shocked to see that there are hundreds, probably thousands of deer. Meanwhile, Amanda shares about the blackout and warning messages on her phone. The warning was about a cyber security attack, and Ruth shares that hackers may have attacked the powerhouse, and that way, they crippled the whole system. Shortly after, GH also decides to venture out, he wants to meet their neighbors, who live a few miles away and find out what's going on. When GH hears about the alerts from Amanda's phone, he plays it down, saying the whole thing must be a big nothing. Before departing, he assures his daughter that mom is fine on her flight, and that they will be seeing her soon. But the moment he enters his car, he texts her several times, and here we learn that they have lost connections with the mother. After he leaves, Rose shares with Archie that she saw a lot of deer this morning, like they were trying to say something, but Archie is stalking Ruth, and he ignores what she says. On the other hand, Clay drives around the area cluelessly, as the GPS isn't working. When he gets out of the car to look for people, the radio inside the car suddenly gives an alert. It reveals that the fallout from the ongoing cyber attack has led to a catastrophic environmental disaster. This has impacted the animal migration patterns, and Clay doesn't hear any of this. Simultaneously, GH has arrived at the neighbor's house. The place seems to be in a disarray, and there are no signs of any humans. GH enters the seaside house, and finds a satellite phone, but even it isn't working. He then slowly proceeds towards the beach, where he suddenly finds a watch. But then, a human hand comes with it when he pulls it out of the sand. GH falls down and sees a human body dead on the beach. Turns out an airplane has crashed, which has left all the passengers and crew members dead, and he is shocked to find dead bodies lying around. As GH tries to make sense of the situation, another airplane approaches the beach at an alarming speed, so he quickly runs away. <laughs> Meanwhile, as Clay is wandering around the streets, he finally comes across someone, a middle-aged woman, but the woman doesn't seem to speak English. The Spanish lady tries to warn him of something, but Clay doesn't understand her. When she keeps asking for help, he gets scared and accelerates away from there. The woman begs for him to return, but Clay doesn't go back. He then drives for a while, until he spots a drone dropping some red stuff in the middle of the road. Clay, terrified, cancels his plan to go down that road and make a U-turn, but the red things, which look like paper, eventually engulf him. At home, Archie and Rose also wander off to the nearby forest, and here Archie is bitten by a tick. Rose sees a deer, but it runs away before she shows it to Archie. Regardless, they venture into the woods, until they come across an old cabin. 
At the same time, GH arrives home, completely soaked in seawater. He lies that he fell into the pool, and he doesn't want to tell his daughter the truth, as Ruth might panic hearing about the crashing planes. While Ruth's away, he tells Amanda about what he witnessed. He also reveals that the satellite phone wasn't working, which is very peculiar as they work when pointed towards the sky. He speculates that the hackers have knocked the satellites out of commission. Just then, a high-frequency sound is blasted out of nowhere, causing everyone immense pain, including the children outside. When everything reverts to normal, the children return home when Archie shares that he is feeling dizzy. Amanda tells the kids to go upstairs, and then she angrily asks Scott what he knows about the situation, but Scott tells her to wait until Clay returns. She even brings up the crashing planes, which worries Ruth, because her mom's flight was supposed to arrive this morning. Amanda then recalls the bearded man from the department store, who was stocking up a lot of supplies. She believes that he knew what was coming. GH surprisingly recognizes the man, and says that his name is Danny. He is a self-proclaimed survivalist, who is always ready for situations like these. As the two are talking, Clay arrives home with a worried look on his face. He brings out a red leaflet from his pocket, revealing that a drone was dropping thousands of these, which appears to be written in a different language. Archie reveals that the words mean death to America, and he knows this because he plays a lot of online shooter games. In the next scene, the Sanfords pack their belongings and leave in their car for New Jersey, where Amanda's sister leaves. GH tries his best to convince them to stay, but they disregard his advice and leave. The roads appear to be completely deserted, with no signs of people whatsoever, but Clay is sure that they will meet others once they reach the highway. After a while, their road is blocked by the presence of hundreds of cars. Amanda goes out to check if there are any passengers, but she finds no one. She eerily discovers that all the cars are Teslas, which are famous for self-driving. Just then, a similar Tesla car approaches from the opposite direction, and Clay becomes happy that they can finally talk to someone. However, Amanda soon realizes that it is also on autopilot. Fearing a potential crash, she asks her family to get into their car and quickly drives away from there. Along the way, they narrowly avoid a barrage of Tesla cars, which are driving on their own. The family then returns back to GH's home, as they have nowhere to go. Amanda once again begins planning another escape, but her husband sternly tells her that they'll be staying here until it's safe. At night, Clay and Ruth have some flavored vape, while GH and Amanda also enjoy a couple of drinks, and this is the first time she has even been nice to him. GH shares a story about one of his rich friends, whom he calls an evil cabal, who recently asked him to move around a large sum of money, as if something big was going to happen. The rich friend also told Scott to take care of himself. On the other hand, Rose goes to see Archie, and asks if there is any hope of getting out of the situation. She really wants to see the last episode of Friends. Outside, as Ruth and Clay are engrossed in conversation, they are startled by a noise. On checking, they find a large number of flamingo birds swimming in their pool. Since the birds don't usually come here, they realize that something is really amiss. GH and Amanda begin dancing while in a drunken state. At one point, they get very close, but they don't do anything drastic. GH shares his fears that his wife may be dead, but Amanda encourages him to stay positive. Just then, the screeching loud sound begins ringing again, breaking all the lights, and scaring the flamingos away. When the situation gets normal, the Sanfords decide to sleep in the same bed. Amanda realizes that her son has a fever, and she believes he'll be okay. Meanwhile, the creepy daughter, Rose, narrates a few odd stories, before saying I think I'm done waiting. The next morning, the family realizes that Rose is missing. And then all of a sudden, Archie wakes up with a fever, and starts puking blood. When he checks his mouth, he's shocked to discover all his teeth are falling. It appears that he has been afflicted by a mysterious illness. Archie thinks it has to do with the bug bite, so GH volunteers to take a puking Archie to his friend, Danny, the same survivalist from earlier. Clay who fails to find his daughter also decides to join him. Meanwhile, Amanda and Ruth begin looking for the little girl. They reach the same old cabin from earlier, where they bicker for a while. However, they soon reconcile, 
and make amends as they need each other now more than ever. As they continue sharing their sorrows, they are startled by a sound coming from outside. Elsewhere, the boys reach Danny's house after a long drive. The self-proclaimed survivalist, who takes intruders very seriously, greets them with his gun. Upon hearing about Archie's disease, Danny explains that the same noise happened in Cuba a few years ago, and caused radiation and people to lose their teeth, so that's probably what made Archie sick. He also claims that the country is at war right now, as the Russians recently called their people from Washington. Unfortunately, Danny refuses to give them the medicine. He doesn't care if George is an old friend and Clay is willing to pay $1,000, his priority is to help his own family, so he refuses to help them. If they want help, he thinks they should go to the neighbors, who are supposed to have a bunker. On the other hand, when Amanda and Ruth slowly come out of the cabin, Amanda is shocked to see hundreds of deer standing next to Ruth. When the alpha deer approaches, possibly to attack them, they start screaming at the top of their lungs. Fortunately, the plan works, and the animals scurry away in fear. They cry and hug each other for consolation. Back at Danny's house, G.H. refuses to leave without the medicine, and decides to brings out his pistol and points at the man, who in turn points his rifle. Terrified, Clay urges his friend to put the gun down, but G.H. refuses. Clay then begins to plead with the man, saying he is only doing what any father would do for his son. He explains that he and Danny have one thing in common, they just want to protect their families. This eventually convinces Danny, and he agrees to trade some pills in exchange for a thousand bucks. Later, once Archie has the medicine, Danny shares some more information with them, he believes that the Koreans are behind all this. Clay then shows him the leaflet from earlier, which is written in Arabic, he believes that it's the Iranians who are the culprits. But Danny doesn't think so. He reveals that before the phones went out, his friend from San Diego, informed him that a drone dropped leaflets there too, but those were in some East Asian language like Korean or Chinese. Danny believes that since the US has made a lot of enemies around the world, they are teaming up to destroy the country. As the guys return to their car, G.H. tells Clay that he saw this coming, but he now knows what's happening. To destabilize and collapse any country from within, the enemy use a three-stage maneuver. The first stage is isolation, where they disable the communication and transportation, rendering the people deaf, dumb and paralyzed. This makes people scared, causing stage two, synchronized chaos, where they spread misinformation and chaos to turn people against each other to survive, as it happened with Danny. This will set up the people for the third and final stage, which is civil war. When citizens end up planning a coup or a civil war, the country will fall apart on its own. Clay and George promise to stick together and take their families to the neighbor's bunker. Back in the woods, Amanda and Ruth come across a grim sight, New York City is in ruins. It is being bombarded by someone, and the entire place is covered in smoke. In the final scene, it turns out that Rose has been in the neighbor's house all along, as she's done waiting. She is having a sumptuous meal all by herself. After this, she heads down to the basement, where she suddenly finds a secret metal door. She opens it with so much force, enters it, and turns the lights on, revealing an emergency bunker inside which is surprisingly stocked with years worth of supplies, including a gym, and a greenhouse. There's also a communication system, which reveals the White House and other major cities are under attack, causing radiation levels to rise near many population centers, and people should find a safe shelter nearby. Rose disregards all of this, and heads to a section of the bunker where a lot of DVDs are stored. Her face lights up when she finds the friend's DVD. She quickly plays it on TV and starts watching the last episode. The movie then comes to an abrupt end, leaving us to wonder what will happen next. Okay guys, thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.